Hello everybody, Shadowcage7 here, and today we are going to embrace the darkness as Nocturne. In this game, in this ranked game, we are going to be playing Jungle Nocturne and going against Zack Jungle. There's a few things I want to say before we actually begin this match. Um, I didn't post up on Tuesday. I really apologize for that. There were a number of things that I had to do. I was kind of busy. I'm really sorry for that. I will try to make up for one of these uh, post-up days. I'll probably uh, post up two videos on next Tuesday. One in the morning and one at night. That, or at least that is the idea. So I do apologize for that. So here my team is kind of just guarding me very heavily because we were expecting an invade and of course if we look at the enemy team they're not invading so this is kind of okay it's fine by us standard stuff we went the refillable pots <clears throat> and the machete because we're nocturne uh it's, it's debatable whether or not you want to go health potion norm the normal health potions if you also if you guys also hear weird noises in the background it's probably my clock or the fan going and excuse me for that so standard stuff we start at red um a few things i want to talk about you see that i signal that he went he started there it's because of the bot lane matchup because they showed up at the same my bot lane and their bot lane showed up at the exact same time that tells me that Zach started at blue it was a very quick tip for you guys if you guys want as a jungler you want to keep track of their jungler and mirror their move as much as you can or have them mirror your move as much as you know as much as you want because if you if you're playing an aggressive jungler then you want to be the one who's leading in the jungle so we give the fortunate first blood from the top lane we take the blue and here I'm actually walking over to the river I'm not gonna take scuttle I'm gonna I'm gonna race to red and that's what I want to do but here I see the teleport top and I ping I ping the Irelia for the kill and we go for it and teleports wasted and now she do, she also don't have flash so now our top lane is in a very comfortable position same strategy um after we do the gank we continue our normal path if you will of course i could path directly to scuttle a bit more reasonable because at this point in the game that's taken right Especially if I'm playing against aggressive junglers like Graves or someone like of that nature. So here I'm just scouting around trying to find the Zack. And then I take Scuttle. You'll also notice that I spread out my abilities and didn't go for like a double QE or a double EQ or whatever, right? So that I found that there are some junglers that will also counter gank us and getting that W for safety is just much better. So there I, see, I throw my my mastery, my runes, my rune portal there. We see the Zac at top. I tried to go for the counter gank here. But there wasn't really a gank at top so I just passed at him peacefully. And of course, if Fiora had flash, she would have got away. Here we just tack some minions. And we we help her push as much as we can. Because we want to get this wave under. Uh, here, I probably should have stayed and pushed that under too. Because right here, I really, really wants to back in her position. Yep, definitely. I learned the income button now, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I should have helped her there. Back to us. Speed up here. We go back and clear. We try to find the Zac. Pressure Ari back. Of course, right now she's mana -less. There's really no point of us, of us going there, but I don't want to see a counter game come to Vagar. So I, I show up there. We go bot to collapse on bot. Works out. We take the dragon because the Jinx is dead. And at this point, 
We could we could be afraid of the smite steal. But this is where our smite skills come in. And you also notice I went TM at first instead of upgrading my jungle item right away. There's a reason for this because we're Nocturne and Nocturne has a very, very if he will have a rough time in the beginning of the game if he has no clear potential. It's arguable that the upgrading the machete into the next jungle, I, I don't know what it's called guys, I'm sorry. The other one, the red one. It's debatable. <clears throat> so here we're going to Poacher's Dirk and this tells tells you guys a lot if the enemy team actually saw this and were actually thinking about it on um, thinking about it clearly then seeing a poacher's dirk on a nocturne like this you can easily easily pick him off and shut him down but in this game as you guys will see later it actually works out pretty nice and poacher's dirk it doesn't cost as much as serrated dirk i think it was called serrated dirk and for nocturne that's very vital because it gives us a gold lead by about 300, I think. Yep. By about 300, I think, if we get the four, the four big minions. And that's all we really need. If, and we can go into Dustblade right away. And then after that, Tiamat. If things don't go well, we go, well, not Tiamat, we go Hydra. If we go high, uh, if we don't get the Dirk right away, we go for the Hydra right away and we get another spike another way. Or at least that is the idea. So here I'm going in with my, my poachers. I see the wolves are still alive and I quickly take it. At this point of the game, I don't know where Zack is. We can safely assume that he's up in his upper jungle. So we're going to speed up here. We want to see if we can gank here, but no. Best not to do for too much fancy things. Here we see the Zac. I tried to go in with my Poacher's Dirk. Tried to pressure him. Do we get picked off here? I don't remember. Okay. Here. <clears throat> here, I think... We still get his passive. Yeah. So if Vagar, if, if Vagar just focused on the Fiora, we would have been fine, I think. Like, if I just pained him, right? Then it, everything would have been much better. Just, just saying. Because here we're not communicating, and that's big. If we're not, as, for as long as we're not communicating, things are, things are bad. Especially as jungler. Jung, well, pretty much in every position you have to communicate. So here, we come back, we want to just clear. And you notice that I'm not just rushing towards mid to go help Vagar. It's simply because Vagar, I want Vagar to play this safe, especially against an Ari. And Vagar will scale into the late game, whereas Ari, her scaling is not that great compared to Vagar. So I just want him to sit there peacefully. So here I want to see if I can throw a gank down. Obviously I can't really do that. No big deal. <clears throat> Unfortunately the exhaust actually saves her. Believe it or not, that exhaust did save her. And yes, yeah, Zara did go exhaust. I don't quite agree with the air though. For her. Uh, we also you also get you you guys also noticed that we went for that. I don't I forgot what it's called exactly, but it's good for Nocturne to proc off his passive, especially when it reduces his cooldown every time he hits. It's basically like another Master Yi passive, except if it doesn't give him more attack damage, it gives him life steal, and within that one hit, it's 120% physical more damage. So imagine hitting that multiple times, it's very deadly. I see the ward, I don't go for it right away, because I want to get my poachers up. It's very dangerous here, extremely dangerous, being protected over there, and of course Ari shows up. I think he, he hits the shield, of my shield with a charm, and we get away with that. Here I'm not rushing towards this, there's no rush because I got my ult.
Here, I think if Alistar actually joined me, it would have been, we would have killed him. But it's not about Alistar. He, if he wanted to play safe, he could. I mean, we're we are the one who's making the call ourselves, so it's no big deal. It's, it's our fault completely. Uh, at this point, Dragon is really open. I don't know why they. Yeah, it is kind of open. If Zach just clears down and make his way to his junk to that dragon, then he basically will take it. Here, I will answer that if he. I'm passing this way instead of up, so that I can answer this dragon. If they ever do it. Of course, we see that they don't. At this point in the game, Zach could be anywhere. We don't really exactly know. So we don't really, we don't have to rush until we see our enemies on the on the field and on the map. And now we're just kind of chilling, trying to leech out the map as much as we can. I tried to start the dragon. It seems like team fight breaks out instead, and it's really unfavorable for us, unfortunately. If I had off here, I probably could have killed her. I didn't. They take a free dragon. We come back into lane. Uh, come back into jungle right away. I want to take my red in case it gets taken. And the poacher at this point is not ready. I got two left. Jungling. Here I'm telling my team I'm really behind on the level, especially when I'm looking at Zach. He's a level 11 and I was level 9 at the point when I looked at it. So I go, I, I need to really clear and stop dying. Even though I have more minion kills, right? Or I farmed more, for some reason I died more. And that's the difference between us. Okay, nothing big happening right here. See the Zack, which is huge. Um, we probably could have altered and gone in, but I didn't really want to risk it, especially as Nocturne at this stage of the game. We don't really have a full item as an assassin, and as an assassin at this point of the game, we don't have a full item. It's kind of risky to do much, if anything, really. But if we manage to, to do pull it off, it will be really, really nice for us, especially as an assassin. So here, our our mid is getting a free turret. I'm getting this turret to half. And we can't really, I can't fight this. Not, never. So we have the flash to answer to that. And we get away. We take that. We take the rocks. We don't get our Dirk yet, so we go Hydra first, so that we have more clear potential. And more burst potential too, if you will. Okay, this play, what happened here? Oh, we jumped the Ari first. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay, so we jumped the Ari first in that fight. I wonder if we could have done that any better. So we jumped the Ari. Yeah, jumping the Ari was probably the best thing that we did here. We could have gone for the Jinx, but if you look at Blitzcrank, he's just going to peel for him. So there was no point. We took a lot of turret shots. Not real great. Like, I think as soon as she flashed, we should have just, I should have just walked away. Did she flash? Oh, she altered. Yeah, as soon as she ought to, I should have just backed away, and I would have saved myself this a lot of trouble here. This is really risky. If Jinx just ought to me here, I will be dead. And of course, though, she gets caught by the Vagar, so which is really nice for us. We get away because Vagar bailed us out. So we try to get away. We fail. Yeah, we fail. Because Ari didn't get picked, and Ari's right. This point of the game is really huge. Really huge. It's questionable too, actually. 11 kills is very coin flipping. 
Like it was a spread of kills as well. And she doesn't have the minions to back the, these kills up. So that tells me, if I if I was still playing this game, that Ari is not the brightest. So Infernal Drake, we really want to contest this. And uh, it's gonna be a free take, I think. Oh no, they tried to steal. Yeah, there it is. Late jump. After the dragon, I just wanted to back away because I have no vision of the enemy team. I don't know what's gonna happen to us caught in this little position here. Because if we're caught in this position here, Ari is gonna have a very favorable spot. We pop the alt. We see the Jin also. We can go ham on this. Do you not have grab? Why didn't he just grab us? Very unfortunate. If I didn't chicken out right there, we would have killed the Blitzcrank and maybe Vagar would have survived. Um, but it's also questionable. Like, I wanted to back after the RE pick because there was no, there was nothing really that I wanted to do after that. Like, there, I just want objectives at this point. At this point in the game, objectives are more important than kills. Kills open up the map, it's true. But after the RE kill, just reset, come back, and, you know, play as the game come to us. So here we get our poachers finally. Zach didn't uh, estimate that real well. So we get what we wanted. A lot of minions to just pass up. So I take those, go back, and get my dust blade. So at this point of the game, I am huge. Like 3, 4, 159. You might think that that's... That's not good enough, but you'd be surprised. Like, this is doing like 500 damage right off just hitting someone with it. And if you look at Ari, you know, Ari or Jinx, that's about over half, like a third of their HP, and that is a lot. So, what, where am, why am I not going into this? That is my next question. Because I wanted to get the Ari. So here we actually get the Ari. Pick. We didn't get the Ari pick off, but I did cut Ari off from the rest of the team. We could have gone in sooner, probably would have been better. And we continue to cut her off. Like if she comes at us, she will die. And of course, she mispositions like that. Anytime you are this big, you never get cocky. Not, not saying that I, I'm guilty of it too, how I admit. But. If you don't respect that people has flash, like you have to always constantly think, what does this guy have? Does he have his flash? Does he have his gap closer? Obviously, I blew my gap closer right away, but I already didn't respect the, the, the part where I have flash still. Does she know? She doesn't. But she, but could she have predicted it? Of course she, of course. There was just... She could have really predicted it from really far away. There's there's no way you could just look at somebody and be like, they don't have flash all the time, especially when you're low HP. Or even like le a little bit less than half HP. If you're playing against an assassin and you're a little bit less than half HP, you probably shouldn't be there anymore. Or be at least very far away to an extent where you're drawing pressure to you because you want the attention while your team does the damage for you. And be bait, but it's all the it's all about the mind games, really. Oof, Forty-five. Uh, here we we don't want to fight this. It's very unfavorable to us. We have no vision, so I just take my time going over there. It's unfortunate that we didn't get the RE pick, and we get picked off here. Very unfortunate. In turn, our mid is pushing. Right here, if my team was just stop chasing this, it would be better. Like, there's no way they're gonna kill this Ari at this point. Like, she's standing next to a Blitzcrank. And of course, he gets the pick because Ari decides, you know, to walk back at him for some reason. And of course, Blitzcrank decides to not heal anymore, too. 
But this won't always happen. This is very coin flipping. I didn't really. I don't like it. Where are we? Are we still dead? Here we are. And we win. 28 minutes into the game. Cool. All right. So here we got our dust blade. We got our high draw. Uh. I think the reason why we won this game is not because we got the gen fed. I think it's actually because we got the Irelia fed. Those early ganks, actually, those early win victories for Irelia were huge. I mean, if you look at this, 50 minions, 1-8. You can't say that she suck, right? Because Zack could have come and counter gank. There were plenty of opportunities for Zack to counter gank, right? So we can't just say it's Fiora's fault. And Ari with her lead didn't do anything with it. You can't blame the Fiora for having this kind of stat. When you have an Ari who has a lead on the Vagar and you have a Zag who could mirror my ganks. Especially when he does it much better than me at the level 6 mark. Their bot lane did okay I suppose. It's not too bad. It's not too good. But if you look at the minion count between the difference between them, it's really different. The kills were probably just lucky. A, a lot well, a lot of them were lucky, as you guys probably saw. So a lot of it came down to, I think, was the Irelia. The Irelia took a lead, and she went somewhere else with it. She, she took down the turret. She took down that turret. And then after that, she came, she came and, like, you know... Help bail bot out from wherever they were doing. Bail and me and me and uh, Irela and I, we both bail the Vega out, right? So, as jungler, you have control over what happens over the map. And me and my case, I like to think of who I want to feed and who I want to help. So in this case, I saw the Irelia get the first blood and I go, oh, that's pretty nice. And then I saw the teleport, right? We get that pick. And then for the rest of the game, she's ahead. And we want to keep her lead before the 10 minute mark. So we mirrored, we tried to mirror the Zap gank of the top lane. Um, we don't really care much for mid because our mid is supposed to really just scale into the late game in which case 110 minions at the 28 and 108 minions at the 28 minute this is very embarrassing for both of them uh yeah that's pretty much it um there is a lot of ways you can probably jungle with nocturne this is my preferred way this is my preferred bell you're really squishy but your pickoff carry is really hard there was actually a time and my in one of my practice game i actually did a I actually built the exact same way, but instead I got my dust blade first, and I just bursted all the AD carries. Like every time they they had two AD carries on their team, and every time we started a team fight, I've always bursted one of them down. Like just one combo, alt, and then passive hit, and he's dead. And that's that's without one of one of the that that what was it that rune or mastery that gives us that lethality after a leap or jump i don't know what it's called but you guys can figure that out you guys go look at it but that's without that and we still managed to do that which is sick and i think in this game we can definitely improve on we can definitely improve on invading enemy jungles, I think. That's my opinion on it. So, if you like, if you guys like what you guys saw, please hit the like button. If you guys disagree with some of the things that I said, please write your comments in the comment section below. If you would like to see more videos of this, please hit that subscribe button. And that's all for... Oop, that's all for today.